right buenos dias mis amigos all right so yesterday i do a video on uh, la marzuli and you know i got a lot of comments and i really appreciate this I, this is something that i i would like to see every day all right um this will help me to teach what i'm teaching better and hopefully it'll help you to understand it better all right and so like there's a verse in the bible that says let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear god and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man all right so let me go over some of these comments and then i'll just uh, address them and uh, bear with me here I, I don't know what direction I'm going so uh, son Sondira the gypsy says it helps to look at it through the Jewish and Aramaic languages translation is everything alright so I got a couple of problems with that the, the very obvious you know glaring problem is what you're suggesting is that I can't trust the Bible that I hold in my hands alright that's number one you're basically saying the Bible I hold in my hands is not the Word of God alright and I uh, obviously um, you know I'm gonna take exception to that because I know the Bible that I hold in my hands is directly from God now think about this you know I'm a big time dummy I, I really am I, I'm as as dumb as they get yeah I I barely know English but it's the only language I know yeah, I got no chance to learn Jewish or Aramaic languages no chance at all I took German in the ninth grade I think it was ninth or tenth grade and for that semester I got nine percent you know my last name is Henning it's a German name I took German class and I got nine percent I think that's a record that still stands today for the lowest grade by anybody in any class at any time in human history I think uh, that's what I think I have no chance of learning German no chance at all now you want me to learn Jewish and Aramaic languages I got no shot no chance at all there's no way I think I have a better chance of learning German first of all Jewish and Aramaic languages I, you know Jewish is is subjective I what are you talking about modern-day Jew Judaism or you know J Old Testament Judaism or they're not Old Testament Judaism but Old Testament Jews that you you mean Hebrew because that's different than modern Hebrew All right. ancient Hebrew is a dead language Aramaic is a dead language and these are two different languages nobody is born into these languages and I, I really don't want to get into that in Aramaic language is a Jewish language so uh, you want to claim that there are sections that still speak it well they that I, I don't want to get into that debate whether they're born into it it doesn't matter I mean the light them are just languages okay that's something I don't want to be um, overlooked those are languages those aren't the word of God you know China you could just say Chinese what what's the difference German Chinese Japanese what's the difference these are all just languages you see what I'm saying <laughs> it's not the word of God the word of God is not a language a language is this something that people speak in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 8 Paul writes 
whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Ancient Hebrew, Koine Greek, these are dead languages. Nobody is born into them. There's no possible way to know for sure what these languages say. That's important to understand. It really is. You know, without that understanding, uh, you're really opening yourself up to be deceived. Now let's go to Acts 2. And if you're familiar with the cloven tongues, then you're also, then so also should you be familiar with, you know, Acts 2 and this particular phrase. And how hear we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born. So it's not honest with your, you're not being honest with yourself to say, well, God can't speak to me in my own language. That's, you're not being honest with yourself. God is able to speak all languages for all time, forever and ever. All right, and Isaiah, it says, men with, a, with stammering lips and another tongue, will he speak to this people? And then, of course, in the New Testament, we have with men... Of other tongues and other lips. Oops, not lippus. Excuse me, hold on. In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet, for all that, will they not hear me, saith the Lord. God is able to speak all languages for all time, forever and ever. Let me see if I can find a verse here. And, uh, no, uh, hold on a second. Oh, hold on a second. It's right on the tip of my tongue here. Hold on a second. There it is. First Peter chapter 1. Scroll on down. For all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of grass the grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away but the word of the Lord endures forever the word of the Lord endures forever Jesus says heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will not pass away. So in the resurrection we read here in Zephaniah 3 it says, for then I will turn to the people a pure language. Alright, so all the languages that are spoken in the world today will not be spoken in the world to come. That's important to understand. It really is in my opinion because then you can understand that hey you know languages come and go but the Word of God endures forever the Word of God goes on and on forever and ever the Word of God transcends all languages for all time forever and ever all right let's see all right so um, to look at it in Jewish and Aramaic languages, what you're you're not really looking at the languages. All right, you, you can make that claim, but to be honest with yourself, Sandira, be honest with yourself. You're not looking at those languages because you don't know those languages. You are looking at what men say. Those languages say. You're depending on what man says. Now you're depending on what man says. God says rather than trusting God and the Word of God. All right, does that make sense? Instead of believing the Bible that you hold in your hands, you're believing what men tell you the Bible says. All right, and this goes all the way back to the very beginning. 
in Genesis 3. Now the, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yeah, as God said, question mark, getting Eve to doubt the word of God. And it's that doubt and lack of faith is what led to Eve being tricked by the serpent. And so if you want to deceive people today, just tell them they can't believe, they can't trust the Bible they hold in their hands. You got to go to a language, a foreign language that you don't know. All right, and then I'm going to give you the interpretation. I'm going to say, well, in the English it says dog, but here in the Jewish language it says cat. It's different. So you can't trust what you're reading. And that's essentially what you're saying, is that I can't trust the Bible that I hold in my hands. I have to trust other people to tell me what God says. Because there ain't no way in H-E double hockey sticks I'm ever going to be able to learn Jewish and Aramaic languages. No way. Now we're also warned of these so-called Jews. In Philippians 3 verse 2, Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. The concision is those of the uh, those that are of Judaism, you know, those that say they are Jews and are not. And John chapter eight is a great conversation Jesus has with those Jews who said they were Jews, who said they were the children of Abraham, but were not God's people. God was not their father. Right? Because they were supposed to be of Abraham's seed, but they weren't because they didn't believe in Jesus Christ. So maybe from a physical standpoint, they were the seed of Abraham? Maybe. But from a spiritual standpoint, standpoint they are not the children of God we Christians are the children of God now here in Genesis 3 verse 15 it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel all right so this is talking about the serpent which is absent of God and then the children of God I will put enmity this is the Lord speaking to the serpent saying, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and the woman represents the city of God, the people of God, the new Jerusalem. And between thy seed, the seed of the serpent, and her seed, right, it shall bruise thy head, it being the city of God, God, the people of God and thou shalt bruise his heel this is Jesus stomping his foot on the head of the serpent and of course in Galatians chapter 3 we learn that now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made he saith not into seeds as of many but as of one into thy seed which is Christ and if you be Christ then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise see we that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ we are the children of God we are the people of God because of Jesus Christ I forget where I'm going here right here which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy we that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ we are 
the children of God. All right, we are strangers in a strange land. And this land, this world, is coming to an end. Our hope in our city is in heaven. Our Jerusalem is above. It's not on earth. Jerusalem, which is above, is free and is the mother of us all. Right? So, why would you go to people and their language that you don't know and a people that full on reject the Lord Jesus Christ? Right, that might be too hard for somebody to understand, but my hope, of course, is that one person will understand first John chapter 2 who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ he is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son of so of course these people that you speak of they full-on reject the Lord Jesus Christ and there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved other than the name of Jesus. The name Jesus is the only name whereby we can be saved. All right, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And of course, these people that you speak of they full on reject the Lord Jesus Christ and so why would you rely on them to tell you what God says when they don't understand the Word of God at all they don't understand the Word of God at all not even in the Old Testament they don't understand the Old Testament at all if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ you have no understanding of the Old Testament or the New Testament 2 Corinthians 3, but even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. So once again, here we see that it's about faith. It's about faith, believing in the word of God, believing in Jesus Christ who is the word of God in heaven. And the Bible that we hold in our hands is the Word of God on earth. Of course, that Bible has to be King James Bible because all modern perversions or all modern versions are perversions of the Word of God. Just as we read in the Bible exactly what it says and what is happening today, 2 Corinthians 2, for we are not as many which corrupt the Word of God, and that's exactly what we see going on today and evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived so why would you trust evil men to tell you what God says now it took me a while to realize this as well because when I first became a believer I wanted to know where can I find the original Bible and I emailed somebody at some Bible college and they said, well, uh, I don't remember the exact uh, answer that I was given, but the implication was that uh, there's uh, manuscripts in foreign languages that are translated into the English language. And so all these translations give a, a rough idea for what these originals say. Well, years later, I come to find out, you know, I, I thought, well, you know what, I, I'm, I'm having problems with all these different um, Bible versions because they're not all squaring up. And some of them are just flat out contradictory. And then I notice, notice in some of them, they have, they've omitted verses. And I'm like, well, it's hard to discern because until you read you know if you read one verse now you have to read all these other verses or all these other versions 
to figure out if that verse is true. It shouldn't be that complicated. So I said, well, all right, I got some time now. I'm going to go and find the originals. I'm going to see what I can just see where it goes, right? Well, I'm come to find out there are no originals. There are no originals anywhere. And, in fact, when you read the Bible, you see that Moses broke the originals. He smashed them. Moses smashed them. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh into the camp, this was after receiving the word of God, directly from God, written with the finger of God on a tables of stone, and he came down all excited. You Can you imagine how, ex how excited Moses was he just received the Word of God written with the Word of God written by the finger of God and he comes down off the mount and he sees the people dancing and doing the buggy woogie and he sees this calf and they're all worshiping this cow and oh his heart must have dropped and his countenance must have changed in an instant and his anger waxed hot and he was blasted mad and he smashed the originals ah, there it goes there goes the originals well that's what Moses <sighs> that's how much he regarded the originals if he didn't put all that faith in the originals then why do you the Word of God endures forever whether it's written down on tables of stone whether it's in another languages or other you know these old languages the Word of God is still going to endure forever even when these old languages they they're done away with the Word of God still exists you can't do anything you can't destroy the Word of God you can't hide it you can't conceal it so if you want extra knowledge and extra meaning you extra understanding then have faith in the Word of God it's it's about faith see think about this when Moses is read even today it's in Genesis chapter 1 whatever when Moses is read today <clears throat> excuse me the veil is upon their heart so they they don't have understanding they don't have eyes to see they don't have ears to hear because they don't believe with their heart so the key is not in extra biblical books or foreign languages the key is right side right inside your heart it's faith it's always been about faith it's always been about faith salvation is by grace through faith right we desire mercy and not sacrifice right it's always been about faith and it's pretty evident in the, Hebrews 11, love this chapter, you see all these mentions of faith, and it gives a great a rundown of really throughout the whole Bible about the importance of faith. It's always been about faith, and even unto this day when Moses read, because they don't have faith, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, when they shall have faith, their eyes will be open the veil shall be taken away and we read many examples of this all throughout the Bible how their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they see not for this people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them see it's about faith it's always been about faith 
the key to understanding the Word of God is faith. Even unto this day, the veil is upon their heart because they don't have faith. So again, if you don't have faith in the Bible that you hold in your hands and you go to other books or other men, if you're going to other books and other men to know to learn what God says, that means you don't have faith in the Bible that you hold in your hands, which is the Word of God. And so it's why this is why we read in Matthew 24 when Jesus says take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many and this things will get worse and worse and except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened because people will be uh, over uh, how do I say this uh, generally or uh, overall people will be there will be fewer and fewer people saved there will be fewer and fewer people that have faith as we approach the end of the world and if God would allow for things to continue on there would come a point where there would be nobody that is saved on the earth. There would be nobody that has faith on the earth. And so in, an interesting question is asked here in um, Luke 18, um, where it says, Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, that though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily? Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? That's an incredible question to ask. Because we're approaching a time when there's hardly anybody saved. You see all these people on all sorts of platforms and everywhere around the world that seem to be believers and the Lord Jesus Christ. They seem like they have knowledge and wisdom and you know all sorts of stuff. The scholars, they go to seminary schools and all this stuff. They call themselves doctor and pastor and all this sort of stuff. And what does Jesus say? He says, For many shall come in my name saying, I, Jesus, am Christ and shall deceive many. Now think about that. The people that are deceiving are those that are claiming to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They call themselves Christian. Those are the deceivers. And so we're approaching a time when there's going to be nobody saved. Well, except God's going to cut those days short. Okay? Alright, so that's it's interesting, uh, at least to me, when you take into consideration uh, what we're seeing by so many people, um, like L.A. Marzulli, who claims that you can't believe the, the Bible. You have to read these extra biblical Bibles to get extra knowledge and all those extra Bible or extra they're not even extra biblical they call them extra biblical but they're not they're fables in fact they're Jewish fables and I'll get into that here in a little bit alright so let me go to the next um, comment here great videos usual quite simply even his word will never pass away all else is deception that's true thank you very much without mixture Enoch was favored by God all right grand grandma Carlson all right thank you for this comment here Enoch was favored of God so that book shouldn't be thrown into the pile of with sci-fi writings yes it should be because as I explained in this video that 
Enoch lived before the flood, so he didn't make it beyond the flood. And then after the flood, the languages were there. I'm sorry, the language was confounded. So anybody that knew that first original language, they did not know it after the moment God confounded the language. Nobody understood that original language. Now look at it this way. This is uh, for some reason hard for people to understand, but think of it this way. Everybody speaks English. All right, let's say English is the original language. All right, and then let's say God confounded the language, but he didn't he kept the original language, the English. So you speak English now. Or you you still speak English, but now God confounding the language, he gave you uh, Spanish. All right, and so he gave me Chinese. All right, so now I speak English and Chinese, and you speak English and Spanish. Well, rather than trying to learn Spanish, I think I'll just speak to you in English. Right? <laughs> I mean, so then there would really be no purpose at all to speak this new language that 90% of the world doesn't know. We, did. we all speak this original language. We'll just stick with that. So that's not what happened. That's not what happened at all. When God confounded the language in Genesis 11, then that first original language was done away with. That's important to understand because that first original language is what Enoch spoke. So if he had written a book, that book could not have been translated into any of the new languages, right? One language here, Genesis 11, and then God confounded the language, and then of course we go to Jude, and then we see that Enoch prophesied. It does not say that Enoch wrote it says he prophesied. That means this is an oral tradition that's been passed down. All right, it's really that simple. And we get lots and lots of examples, and that's what I showed you yesterday. Of it is written, it is written, it is written, and, and it's incredible, really. And when it says this, it's pointing to. Uh, a book that was written all right and but in Jude it doesn't say it was it is written all right so these guys which I believe uh, it's not, this is pure speculation I believe the Roman Catholic Church created this book of Enoch and is using it to deceive people It's, it's almost pretty obvious to me. I'll get into that more here in a second. Okay. All right, so where is our faith that the book was written by a prophecy? Enoch was favored of God, so that book shouldn't be thrown into the pile of sci-fi writings. So where is our faith that that book was written by a prophecy? The Torah was also an oral information until Moses wrote it down. So why are you voiding what Enoch said? You hung yourself when you obviously didn't study this out when you started talking UFOs and little green men. Alright, so hopefully I, I already just explained why <laughs> Enoch could not have written a book. It's not possible. Now, God gave Moses the words to write down just like what we read in Exodus 32 there what I already showed you written with the finger of God right so I'm trying to understand the question so I want to help you I really do or what I say Exodus 32 all oh, it was well this is Exodus 31 but you get the idea if you're familiar with Exodus you know this very well 
that Moses was given tables of stone, two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. And that reminds me of something I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you earlier, you know, when I was telling you about how dumb I am. And I got no chance to learn these foreign languages. Let me think of it real fast. Oh, goodness sakes. Look how far off I am. I, I can't be too far off. Maybe it's this word right here. Oh, uh, let me think of it this way. Alright, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to think of the verse. Oh, I got it. I got it. I probably need more coffee. No, come on now. Let me do it this way. No, something wrong with my brain. Let me do it this way. There it is. Oh, doggone it. Okay. Psalm 19. I'm trying to remember that. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. Right, so this is evidence right here that you don't have to be a guru. You don't have to have seven years of seminary college or whatever. All you have to do is believe in the Word of God. Making wise the simple. This right here, this means dummy. So if you're a dummy like me, the Word of God can make you wise. Not because you're wise, but because God is wise. Okay. The law of the Lord is perfect. So the law of Moses is perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple. See, the law is our schoolmaster to bring us to faith in Christ. That we might be just to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. So the the beauty of the Bible is phenomenal. It's incredible how wonderful the Bible is because it can take the biggest dummy on earth and make them wise by the Spirit of God and of course we read all about the Spirit of Truth that will be given to us once we are born of God it's incredible it really is how be it when he the Spirit of Truth is come he will guide you into all truth see the truth is not outside of the Bible it's inside of the Bible Right? If you want the truth, then believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the spirit of truth from above comes in onto you and dwells within you and guides you into all truth. But until you have faith, there's a veil that is upon your heart. So why, why would you go to Enoch? The book of Enoch. You, I think the Roman Catholic Church wrote it and then they threw it in a cave and they sent one of their kids out to discover it and the fact that this book was found okay I'm gonna get into that in a little bit uh, I'm kinda long-winded on all these I'm confused are you saying what has been written by Jude is irrelevant no what I'm it's pretty obvious here what I'm showing you I'm sorry I don't mean to get I don't mean to get uh, hostile, but what I'm saying is that this here, the book of Jude, is not quoting this imaginary book of Enoch. 
All right, it it's not. It's a oral. It says prophesied. If it was quoting the book of Enoch, it would say it is written. All right, so now the only argument that you can make is to say, well, you can't trust the Bible that you hold in your hands, which I believe is God. I know it's God. It's directly from God. The Word of God is God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And Jesus Christ is the Word of God. In heaven, the Word of God on earth is my King James Bible. God speaks in all languages, for all time, forever and ever. Alright, we can know what the Word of God says we can know for absolute certainty for absolute surety we can know absolutely what the Bible says exactly or we, we can know what God says exactly just by believing the Bible that you hold in your hands so this book of Jude this is the Word of God this is not from man this is from God Every word in the Bible is from God. Holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is God. Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the Word of God. Jesus is God. Alright, and so, um, obviously, obviously, I'm saying this is absolutely 100 percent true people that say that Enoch is quoting the book of Enoch they're saying this is not true that's the difference okay so I'm defending Jude and what these liars are saying is that Jude can't be trusted we have to trust them to tell us what Jude says and they are saying that Jude's quoting from the book of Enoch when it doesn't quote from the book of Enoch. At all. It says prophesied. This is what he taught. It does not say it is written. And I showed you yesterday example after example when something is quoted from a Bible from another book. It says it is written. It is written. It is written over and over and over. It is written doesn't say it there in Jude. Alright. Am I getting fired up or is it just in my head here? In Psalm chapter 12. The words of the Lord are pure words. As I don't like these right there. you got get, you got to get rid of these. And the King James is not a version. It is the Bible. So let's go to Psalm 12. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in the furnace of earth. Purify it seven times. Oh, oh, wait a second. Oh, got it. Let's see. I am getting fired up, ain't I? Let's try it this way. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. We have a promise from God that he will preserve his words forever. All right. I've already quoted a many other examples of that. One thing that confounds me is the verse that states there were giants in the land in those days. And also after that. So Noah's generations were not tainted, but were the wives of his sons perhaps tainted? Or did the angels infest some again after the flooding? After the flood? Interest? No, 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 no. I, this is another example of people trying to get you to not believe what the Bible actually says. All right, so it's incredible because in Genesis six it clearly teaches us, clearly shows us that the problem is man. Not, not a single time is angels mentioned in this at all. And then, 
uh, it's interesting to me because the devil has come in and taught people well hey it's this isn't about man this is about angels and this is about them having sex I just I, I don't know how to else to say it but this is this here this <laughs> when you start talking about angel sex man you're a pervert you're a disgusting filthy pervert you got no business teaching the Bible at all really there should come in the last days mockers well, what are they doing they're walking after their own lust that's in Jude <laughs> you, you make a big deal about reading Jude and about how smart you are and how you know you got all this scholarly you know knowledge you got access to all these books and all these informations and what I don't this smarter than dog biscuits aren't you you don't even realize this Bible that you pretend to teach it's talking about you you don't even realize it even though it's right there in front of your face and that reminds me of when uh, Jesus says uh, how do you not understand me even as I stand right in front of your face you still don't understand a word I'm saying what is that why do ye not understand my speech even because he cannot hear my words he's standing right in front of you right in front of them and they can't understand a single word that they're saying it's incredible mockers in the last time walking after their own lust in 2nd Peter chapter 3 knowing this first that there should come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust so when people are pointing to Genesis 6 and trying to teach you that this is about angels having sex with your wife and your daughter while you're sleeping or whatever it's not about that at all it's not about angels it's not about um, you know this perverted sex that was going on it the perverted sex was between man and women not dogs and cats or whatever so the problem is right here it tells us exactly what the problem was God saw that the wickedness of man doesn't say God saw the wickedness and pervertedness of angels that were having sex with all these women no it's not that at all God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually and I repented of the Lord that he had made man on the earth well what if the angels were having sex and that was why God destroyed the world why doesn't why wasn't God repented that he made the angels why, why is he laying the blame on man so I will destroy man what what about the angels they're the ones that are doing all the the bad stuff why would you punish man when it's these dirty stinky sex driven angels well that's not about I mean if you're looking at this if you're reading this and you're seeing angels having sex man there's something wrong with your heart I mean that there's something serious and that's that you know what that's exactly what the Bible says would happen evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived and that's a you can't trust this you're telling me I can't I can't trust what's the Bible I'm holding in my hands I can't trust the Word of God I gotta rely on you remember Genesis 3 yea as God said you know right here it says that God saw the wickedness of man yeah as God said that and then you want to turn around and tell me no it was the wickedness of angels having sex with women 
Uh, isn't that exactly what's going on? And just as we read in the New Testament over and over, how as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it, the way it was back then, in the days of Noah, it's going to be like that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And I'm telling you, it's what's happening now in the world is what was happening in the days of Noah when the flood waters came. All right, what's going on today is exactly what was going on in the days of Noah. And people are just oblivious to all the deception and all the wickedness that is in the world today. And this idea that angels are coming down and having sex, that's every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. This idea of angels having sex is evil. It's full of lust and it reveals the perversion that is in your heart. Alright, let's see. I don't think I'm done talking about that. We'll see here. Alright, so what do you say? So Noah's generations were not tainted? No, it was the evilness in their heart. Okay, so um, right there, in a, uh, right here in verse 5, it says, Every imagination of his heart was only evil continually. There's something in the book of Jeremiah that says um, the heart is uh, deceptively wicked. No? Could I be wrong again? The, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it so the problem isn't angels coming down and having sex with you while you're snoring the angel or, or, <laughs> the, uh, excuse me the problem is the heart right the problem is the human heart and it was a problem in the days of Noah and men were living hundreds and hundreds of years back then. And they did not have the law of Moses. They did not have the promises of God. They were given the opportunity to do it all themselves without God. And they failed. Big time. So God destroyed the world. And now set up, he's established a new world where... We now don't live as long, and we have the law of God, the law of Moses. All right, and not only that, we also have the Spirit of God. So we we're given everything that we could possibly need, and there are still people that reject it. In so much that if God allows things to continue as they are, there's going to come a point where there's no flesh saved and who knows that point might be tomorrow so if it's it's time it's time to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ if you put it off another day and Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's too late you waited too long there are no more opportunities after the Lord Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven that's it all right, so, um, so I, I hope I covered that, John Snodgrass. I appreciate these comments here. Way too many make everything about themselves. When I got over myself, I learned some things. Okay, so that's great, but I'm going to tell you the key, the secret to learning and to understanding and to have this extra knowledge and extra wisdom and extra understanding. The key, the secret is faith. It's always been about faith. Believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. Believe it's directly from God. Because it is. It absolutely is. And it's a shame that people don't believe that. Now you think about it. If you don't believe the Bible you hold in your hands, you're putting your trust in man. And when you put your trust in man... You curse your own self. Okay, William Latham. Thanks for 
making a video on LA though you didn't get through to when he mentions the book of Enoch it is in the Ethiopian Bible at the 832 mark and then LA asked the King James only crowd which Bible is the correct one if you can listen through to the nine minute mark LA explains more and that's what had me wondering about this if the Ethiopian Ethiopian Bible has errors all right so let me just glance through this here um, uh, see you know I might have to make a part three because of Babis Bab you know he writes all this nonsense and unfortunately a couple of his suckers they eat it up alright that's too bad that's too bad hopefully um, hopefully I covered this already uh, what's he say never forget learning about words with various meanings Yea, has God said, Thou shalt not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? For the Lord God does know that when the day that thou eat. See, you want to put your trust in something else outside of the Bible. And because of that, you don't believe the Bible. And this fallen angel sci-fi stuff. Okay, so let's get into Williams' comment here, and this is really what started uh, this. So 8:32, nine minute mark. I'm going to start here at 7:57. Um, it, it, there's no scripture or no verse I can point to that would that would state that demons are but disembodied spirits. Of yeah, because he's just making it up. He can't point to anything in the Bible. Because he's full of a s h, he's full of it, and that's obvious. This guy's a deceiver. There's a Nephilim. However, Jude quotes the Book of Enoch, so I'm going. That's a lie. Jude does not quote the Book of Enoch. Now I want you to think about this. Listen to what he says. Disembodied spirits of the Nephilim. However, Jude quotes the book of Enoch. So I'm going to unshackle myself intellectually and go back to the book of Enoch. Now, Lee, you can not believe that or throw it out the window or whatever. If you were going to keep one book from people, you would keep the book of Enoch from them. Why? And that thing was buried for th almost 2,000 years. Now, think about what he's saying. He's saying the book of Enoch was buried for 2,000 years. Until R.H. Charles found a copy and translated it. It's the first book of the Ethiopian Bible. It's the first book of the Ethiopian Bible. But it's been buried for 2,000 years. So in order for it to be the first book of the Ethiopian Bible, it would have just it, it would have to be that it was just recently was done that way. They just recently added that book. I mean that's like me taking my Bible then adding the book of Jimmy at the very beginning. Well what what's the difference? You did it with this this cave book, why can't I do it? Really? What's the difference? So, by his own admission, this book has been hidden for thousands of years. Why? And that thing was buried for th almost 2,000 years. That thing was buried for almost 2,000 years. And then uh, the Roman Catholic got their hand, like the Roman Catholic Church got their hands on it. Well, that's amazing, isn't it? That's incredible. What luck the Roman Catholic Church has. You know, they also found these ancient manuscripts. That's incredible luck. And these are the manuscripts which all the modern versions are basing their translations off of. Incredible luck. That the Roman Catholic Church got their hands on it. That's incredible. And you believe them. 
That's what's sad. And you don't even realize. That all these modern perversions, they are Catholic, Roman Catholic perversions. They're deceiving you. Remember, remember the 5th of November when the Roman Catholic Church tried to kill King James because he was translating the Word of God into he commissioned 54 of the greatest scholars of that time to translate the Word of God into the English language because he'd done that they, the Roman Catholic Church tried to kill him because the Roman Catholic Church had made it illegal to have an English translation of the Word of God. It was illegal. They killed William Tyndale because they caught him. They got him. They caught him translating the Word of God in English so they hung him on a, on a rope and they graciously waited until he was dead before they burned his body. Was so nice of them. So considerate. Yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> you don't know that Daniel talks about four beasts until the end of the world and that he names the first three beasts and the fourth beast has to be the Roman Empire which was which transitioned from the Roman Empire into the Roman Catholic Church and the horror the great horror of Revelation 17 is the Roman Catholic Church you didn't know that and so now you're depending on the Roman Catholic Church to give you these modern versions that are based on Roman Catholic manuscripts Sinaiticus and the Vaticanus and now you got the book of Enoch and you're gonna trust these guys when the Bible explicitly speaks against them it's incredible years until R.H. Charles found a copy and translated it it's the first book of the Ethiopian Bible so for all you I, I just don't understand that it doesn't make sense in my head this book was buried for 2,000 years and now it's the first book of the Ethiopian Bible so now I can't trust the Bible that I hold in my hands I gotta learn Ethiopian you gotta be kidding me I gotta learn uh, ancient Hebrew I gotta learn Koine Greek I've gotta learn Aramaic and now I gotta learn Ethiopian to know what God says? I can't just believe the Bible that I hold in my hands? Oh, man. What well, the hell with that? I just better listen to L.A. Marzulli and he tell me what God says. Might as well consider him God Almighty. King James only out there. Which, which Bible is the correct one? I just opened up. Well, I'll tell you. The King James Bible. He ain't smart enough to figure that. You seem like a smart guy, L.A. You got a lot of people fooled here. You can't figure it out. Then I'm going to tell you the King James Bible is directly from God. Let's listen to the question. King James only out there. Wait, I can't. Thousand years until R.H. Charles found a copy and translated it. It's the first book of the Ethiopian Bible. So for all you King James only out there, which which Bible is the correct one? I just opened. Up a huge can of worms. So which Bible is the correct one? King James only should suggest should be a clue. If you're King James only, then the King James will be the correct one. Yeah. Am I not? Am I missing something here? Book of the Ethiopian Bible. So for all you King James only out there, which which Bible is the correct one? I just opened up a huge can of worms by saying that is the Greek Orthodox, the Russian Orthodox. Um, no. no. <laughs> I mean, it just goes on, nope. right? No. Nope. The King James? Which one has it? Which one has it right? The King James Bible. It's directly from God. And we're going to find out when the Lord comes in the clouds of heaven that the Word of God has been with us the whole time. Has it right? 
which one has it right, which is why if I'm studying something, I'll look at all source material I can possibly get. And, and you're not going to believe in any of it. And you're going to you're going to decide what is truth. You are the final authority, not God, but you in your own heart you're gonna decide what is true and what's not watch and come to a conclusion if you go to seminary you are being directed in a, in a certain path you are being told what to think but if you don't go to seminary and you're an independent researcher like myself and you're not shackled by um, a certain paradigm of a certain denomination then you're free to think then you're free to think and that's that's the whole point of of you know <laughs> earlier in the week we talked about archaeologists well what was the point LA I was you had me hanging the whole time buddy you had me on the edge of my seat and then you lost it didn't you you lost your train of thought you don't know what the hell you're talking about see I'm one of those people that I didn't grow up in a church I didn't go to seminary school I don't belong to any denominations. I, I just believe the Bible. That's it. That's all I do. I just believe what this Bible says. It. I revere the Word of God as it is God. John chapter 8, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free. Indeed. So he wants to claim that he's a free thinker. But he's not a free thinker at all. He does not believe the Bible that he might hold in his hand. Of course, he, he don't have a Bible in his hand, but you get what I'm saying. He does not believe God has given us his pure word. Think about this, man. All right, so I got to end this here. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. And of course, in Deuteronomy, we read that man cannot live on bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. Well, if that's true, then where can I find the book of the Lord? And, you know, there's a comment here. Oh, I didn't study. You hung yourself when you didn't study. I hung myself. You hung yourself when you obviously didn't study this out. Now, I don't study the one. I'm just making stuff up like L.A. Marzulli. You can't remember. Can't keep a, he can't keep a thought for more than a couple of minutes. And maybe I can't either. But this is where you're, you're putting all your faith and your trust and your hope into what L.A. says. And he don't believe none of it. By his own omission, he does not believe in any single source Bible. He believes right there what is in his heart. And I'm going to tell you that this Bible, the King James Bible, is the pure, perfect, pure Word of God. And it's, this is very important, right? Where am I at here? Let's go to Isaiah real quickly. Seek ye out of the book of the, I'm sorry, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Man cannot live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. And Jesus says, but it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It is written. It is written. It's not prophesied. It is written. It's written right there in Deuteronomy 8. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And so, where can I find every word of God? Do I have to watch L.A. Marzulli's videos to learn? Because he doesn't believe in the word of God. He believes in all these extra biblical books. And he's pretending like it's giving him extra knowledge, extra wisdom, extra understanding and it's not 
even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when they shall turn, when they shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. The key is faith, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want extra knowledge, extra understanding, the key is faith. Right? If you want that extra wisdom, it comes from faith. When you have faith, then your eyes are open, your ears are open, you're able to hear, and you're able to see, and you're able to understand what the Word of God is saying. Alright, so thank you for these comments. I really appreciate them. And uh, just real quickly here, uh, my friend uh, William Latham, I hope that I've covered this. Um, the King James Bible is directly from God and of course these these come on I already went over this but again the, the book of Enoch was hidden for 2,000 years and now all of a sudden it's found in the Ethiopian Bible and so oh, I gotta learn Ethiopian God help me God help me I, I don't I got no chance if that was true and neither would you. Alright, buddy. So I'm just going to tell you the key, the secret is faith. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And if the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Right. Good day.